my students are always asking me about a cost-effective way to set up a home lab um, to be able to practice for both the VCP and VCAP DCA. Um, and I always suggest Autolab because it is, it is free and it's very easy to set up and can be run on just about any Windows PC that runs VMware Workstation. Um, I'm going to go through a, a set of videos um, to kind of walk through the installation and use of Autolab on a Windows PC using VMware Workstation. And this first video is just going to be covering uh, my, a little bit about my current setup and the PC that I'm currently using, um, how to configure uh, VMware Workstation um, to run Autolab, and then how to obtain Autolab and then um, add the Autolab VMs to VMware Workstation. Uh, finally, as part of this video, we'll start up the first couple of Autolab VMs so that we can prepare for um, getting the Autolab environment ready to run. So let's talk about the PC that I'm running my auto lab on. Um, it's nothing very fancy. It's running Windows 7 Home. It has an AMD dual core processor. It's running 16 gig of RAM and I have an SSD installed for um, just for running auto lab. Um, an SSD isn't required for auto lab. It'll run just fine on a regular spinning disk, but it does run um, considerably better uh, if you can run it from an SSD. Um, this PC that I'm using cost uh, about 360 bucks. Uh, I bought it off the shelf at Best Buy. Um, it was purchased just for the purpose of running a VMware Workstation Lab. Um, I did upgrade the memory from the 4 gig that it came with to 16 gig, and then of course added the SSD drive. Um, all in total, it less than 500 bucks um, for this PC that's running. The, my workstation lab for uh, the VCP and VCAP DCA. Also on the PC is VMware Workstation. I'm running VMware Workstation version 8 on this PC. Um, version 10 is available, uh, just haven't upgraded here yet. Uh, Auto Lab requires either Workstation 8 or better. Um, so if you have a copy of VMware Workstation 8, uh, you'll be able to run Auto Lab just fine. If you buy the latest version of VMware Workstation, which is Workstation 10, you'll also be able to run uh, Autolab without an issue. And that's pretty much all you need to be able to run um, this nested uh, vSphere environment within, um, within Autolab. It is a PC. PC needs to have at least 8 gig of RAM in it, uh, running Windows, and then VMware Workstation. So once you have your system right, and you've, you've, you've purchased what you're going to purchase, or you've installed VMware Workstation on, a, on the system you already have, uh, the next thing you need to do is, is obtain Autolab. Um, Autolab is downloaded from labguides.com. Um, just go to www.labguides.com slash Autolab. Uh, you will have to um, register uh, before you can download. Um, registration, they just ask for your first name, last name company name, always just put home lab, and then your email address. Um, the sponsors uh, of labguides.com and Autolab uh, do um, put you on a mailing list, but I've only received one email from them in, in probably three or four months, so it's not like you get inundated with, with emails from the sponsor. Uh, once you fill out the registration, uh, you, down, you can download Autolab. Uh, the there's a deployment guide, which is a step-by-step -step, uh, PDF uh, instruction sheet, and then you download the uh, Autolab version for your platform. We're going to be getting using the nested Autolab on Workstation 8, uh, which I've always already downloaded, as you can see here. Um, so you just download. If you're going to run it on ESXi, you can download the ESXi package, which is an OVA. Um, or you can download the zip package for Workstation 8. Um, I've already downloaded it. I've also got the deployment guide here in case we need to refer to it. Um, the deployment guide walks you step by step on setting things up, um, just as we're going to do through this video. So while uh, Autolab is downloading, um, you can go ahead and set up or 
configure VMware Workstation uh, how it needs to be configured for Autolab. So the first thing we're going to do is reserve uh, some memory for VMware Workstation. Um, I have 16 gig of RAM in this uh, PC, so I'm going to reserve 12 gig of RAM um, just to be used by uh, VMware by the VMs running in uh, VMware Workstation. Um, I'm going to try to fit all that virtual machine memory into this reserved piece of RAM. Uh, that that way they will run the best. If you try to s start more virtual machines than the RAM reservation that you've set, and you haven't set one of these to allow some virtual machine swapping, it, it'll tell you that there's not enough reserved memory and then you may have to come back and change this to allow some of the virtual machine memory to be swapped. If you do that, it is going to slow down things a little bit, uh, but you know, depending on what you're doing in your lab and how much memory you need to allocate uh, to your nested VMs, uh, you may need to, to adjust that. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to just set it to, to 12 gig of RAM uh, and then fit all of the virtual machine memory into that reserved RAM. The next thing we have to do is set up the virtual network for the auto lab. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add VMNet3. And once it's added, we're going to make a couple of changes to it. Um, we're going to turn off the local DHCP services. And then we're going to make the subnet IP for VMNet uh, VMNet3 to be 192.168.199.0 and the subnet mask should be 255.255.255.0. Um, this is a host only network so it's only going to be communicating between the virtual machines connected to this network and the host that they're running on which the host is the Windows PC that it's running on. Once you apply Um, you also need to make sure that you connect a host virtual adapter to this network. That way the host itself can have access to the network. So we're going to apply this again and let it update. So when it's update, hit OK. And then that's all we have to do to get Workstation ready for um, the Autolab VMs. So now that VMware Workstation's been configured and Autolab has been downloaded, um, is what we need to do is add the shell VMs from Autolab to Workstation inventory. So um, we've downloaded Autolab and it's downloaded as a zip file. We'll need to extract that. Um, I'm just going to extract it all uh, right here, um, which is on the SSD that I have um, allocated for, uh, just for Autolab. It's going to take a few seconds to extract, and it's what's extracting here is all the shell VMs uh, for Autolab. Um, these are just shell VMs. They don't actually have an OS, or at least not all of them, um, have an OS installed on them. Um, and we're going to install all the OSs uh, later in one of the other videos in this series that I'm doing. Uh, but all of the installation is automated. Um, and you'll, you'll see how that works later on in the, the series. For right now is what we're going to do is get the VMs that we're going to need for our uh, VCP and VCAP DCA Auto Lab um, installed into Workstation. Um, the VMs that we're going to be working with are the DC, which is the domain controller host 1, host 2, and host 3, which are ESXi servers, the NAS, which is your shared storage, the router, the router just uh, provides inbound and outbound access to the Autolab environment. Remember, in Workstation, it is on a um, host-only subnet, so there's no way from an external host or the internet to get into or out of that VMNet 3. Um, this router provides uh, a, a NATing router to NAT outwards and also some ports are configured to NAT inwards so that you can hit um, different virtual machines 
that are running on that VMNet3 network. Um, and then the VC, which is the, the Virtual Center server. So to add these um, shell VMs to, to Workstation, it's very easy. Um, just find the .vmx file for each VM and double click it. And it'll add it to Workstation. So we'll go through each of these that we need to. The, there's the DC, the first ESX host, the second ESX host, and then the third ESX host. And now we'll add the NAS. We'll add the router. And then finally, we'll add the vCenter server. So now you'll see all of these VMs are added to the to workstation. Um, and this is your nested auto lab. Uh, I mean, there's still some work to be done, but this these are the VMs that run and are the the core um, piece of your auto lab. The domain controller, your ESXi host, the NAS, the vCenter server, and the router. So now that all the auto lab VMs have been added to VMware Workstation, so what we're going to do is power on the NAS. Um, the NAS is running FreeNAS, and it is where we're going to actually place all of the software that's required by the automation scripts uh, in AutoLab to build out the lab. Um, the longest part of setting up AutoLab is actually going out and collecting all the software. Um, you have to go out and get, you know, the Windows install CDs, the vSphere um, installation CDs for ESXi, and vCenter, um, the installation packages for SQL Server, um, Express, and we're going to go through all of this uh, in, in a future video. Um, not only what software you need, but what uh, how you populate the, the build shares on the NAS. Um, for this video, it's just about getting the NAS up and then getting access to that build share. So the free NAS box takes a couple of minutes to boot up, uh, but once it's up, it, it it's it's up, and there's not really much else you have to do with it other than adding um, the software packages to it. Uh, once once we've added all the build packages, uh, this NAS also provides the iSCSI and NFS storage to the lab. It's going to take another minute or so to get booted. So now that it's finished booting, the NAS is now up, we should be able to um, access the build share on the NAS. So we'll just open up a Explorer window. And there you go. And these, all of these directories um, are where you place the installation files for um, Autolab. Um, you know, we'll place the ESXi five, uh, five build files within this directory, and then the Autolab um, installation scripts pull that information from that directory um, to then install ESX55 on each of the hosts. Um, same thing with vCenter. We're going to install the vCenter infrastructure management tools, which is vCenter, into the Vim directory and then through the automation scripts within Autolab it will get vCenter installed for us and set up. So I, in the next video I'm going to cover collecting all the software here and then where how to place it in the different um, build directories. Uh, but for now we just want to make sure that we are able to access the NAS build share uh, from the host. 
So in this video, we've covered um, just a basic system to use to run a VMware workstation lab using Autolab. We've talked a little bit about how to obtain Autolab from labguides.com slash Autolab. We've talked about how to configure workstation to run Autolab and then adding the VMs, the shell VMs to Autolab and starting the NAS so that you can get access to the build shares to be able to populate uh, those shares with the software required for Autolab. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about all the different software that's required and how to populate the build shares uh, for Autolab. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've learned a little bit. Um, Autolab is a great tool if you are practicing for your VCP or VCAP DCA or if you just want to get a little bit more familiar with uh, VMware um, and the VMware server infrastructure tools. So visit my website www.vhersey.com. Follow me on Twitter um, at HerseyC. Um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the site, on Twitter, or on YouTube on this video page. Um, thanks, and look for the next video in this series soon.